When your kids are born, they are so cute. But then they grow up and want money. So this episode is all about teaching your kids about money. Well, hey, you guys, I'm so excited about this episode because it's all about you, your kids, and of course, money. That's right. We're going to talk about my top tips on teaching your kids to win with money. I'm going to be having my friend and teen expert, Anthony O'Neill, on to help us really break down the walls and connect with our kids. And we're also going to have a couple come on and tell their story about how they paid off 303 thousand dollars in debt. Yeah, that's right. And what's so inspiring is how they so intentionally taught their kids along the way on what they were doing in their journey. So great. And at the end, I have a little surprise for you that may or may not have to do with April Fool's. I'm just saying. But up next, this is not an April Fool's joke. No, it is not. Because my contentment journal is here. You guys, I am so Excited about this. It's going to be shipped all across America, and you can get it. Oh, I really am pumped about this. I am so excited because, again, contentment is something that we talk a lot about, and it's a really, really important foundation for you to have. And it's really hard to be content in our world today. We constantly see what other people have, what other people are doing, and what we're lacking. And so walking through a journey of contentment is not always easy, but it is so important. So I figured out, okay, if we can first learn to be grateful— It's really important. That's the first step. Second step is humility. And then the third step naturally leads into contentment. So we're going to spend 30 days on each of those. 30 plus 30 plus 30 equals 90. If you're doing the math, that's what it is. 90 days. And what I love about it is it is a guided journal. So what you're going to do is you're going to get some teaching throughout it, but it's going to be these guided prompts. So on day 27, it could be whatever day you want. You could be doing this in 2022. You can be doing this in 2019. Whenever you want to do it, you get to write the date. And then you get these prompts in all of these areas of your life, everything from money, your relationships, your time, your goals, the things that are really easy to be discontent on, we hit it right on. And I guide you through it. So you're going to go from being discontent to contentment. So get your copy or start reading for free by clicking the link in the show notes, the contentment journal with gold foil. So pretty. Really excited about it. All right, moving on now. Again, back to the subject on teaching your kids about money. Now, this is something that a lot of parents have questions about. They're always like, how do I teach my kids about money? So here are a couple things to keep in mind. Number one, you have to realize it is your responsibility to teach your kids about money. It's not the school's responsibility. It's not the church's responsibility. It's not TV's responsibility. No. It is your responsibility. You really do. You have to take that weight on yourself that it is up to you. And a lot of parents are like, well, who am I to teach my kids about money? Like, we're living paycheck to paycheck. We're deeply in debt. Like, we've been terrible with money. Who am I to teach my kids about money? Who are you? You were their parents. Yes. I don't care what you've done in the past. That that does not have to dictate your future, and it does not have to dictate your kid's future. I mean, I look at my parents' story, and they filed for bankruptcy the year I was born. And thank God Dave and Sharon Ramsey weren't like, well, who are we to teach people about money? We're terrible at it. I guess that's just who we are. No, they didn't. And because of that, my life has changed and so many other people. So like, you do, you have to take that responsibility. Now, more is caught than taught. So your kids are watching you. So parents, get your stuff together. That's going to be important. But take it on. Don't let those past mistakes dictate your future or stop you from teaching your kids. Also, keep all things when it comes to money age appropriate, okay? Working and learning that your kids, you know, need to work and that they get paid for chores, that they're not just given an allowance, that they are on commission is really important, but you're not going to make your four-year-old go mow the lawn. Like, okay, (laughs) we're going to keep it very age appropriate. You're going to teach them to give, save, and spend. Again, all those things. And I think it's great for kids to save up for things, even like a car when they turn uh, 16 years old. I think that's a great thing they can be saving for. But you may not want to start that when they're four. And last but not least, I love Andy Andrews' quote. He always says, you're not just trying to raise good kids. You're trying to raise kids to be good adults. 
And I love that because what that shows is not just the tactical things that you're teaching your kids, but it's also the character issues. It's all of it. And so what you have to understand is like some parents think, oh, well, I don't want to make my kids give. I don't want to make my kids do certain things. And I'm like, well, you make them brush their teeth. <laughs> you make them do their homework. Why? Because that's going to allow them to do better in life later on. And the same is true with money. And so look at it as not just being good in the present. Look at it that who they become is what you're going for. Think about the future. And my parents did this a lot with me. I remember being just a young 14-year-old, my sister 16, and my dad came into the living room one day and he sat us down and he said, girls, I want you to learn how to run a business. And we looked at him and thought, you're crazy. <laughs> we don't say that to him because well, things would happen. We just thought in our heads, both of us like, what, you want us to run a business? And he was like, all right. You guys think about a business idea tomorrow, we'll regroup, and I want you to, to tell me what you're thinking. And he left, and we were like, what? And so we grew up in a household that like, if the parents said it, the kids did it kind of thing. So we were like, okay, what is he, what is he doing here? So Denise and I came up with a business idea. <laughs> Hold on to your seats, I know you're very curious about it, I'll be telling you in just a second. But we went in, we had to present like our idea to him, and then he helped us make like P&L sheets and understand profit and loss and margin and all the things. And so we started our very own business. My sister and I did that year. A little bit unhappy about it, but we did. So we came up with an idea that in his office building, there were different kitchens on the levels. They had two levels at the time of this office building. And there were these kitchens and vending machines outside the kitchens. And the vending machines were like way overpriced. And we're like, well, what if we put snacks on the counter, drinks in the refrigerator, we charge less than our competitors' prices, AKA the vending machines, and we made some money and people bought snacks from us. So we started a snack business and we called it Your Integrity Snacks because you had to pay for it. <laughs> and so Denise and I started it. So we went and got into her Mustang, yes, Denise drove a Hunter Green Mustang with a lay around the rearview mirror. And there we went off to Costco, loading up the flatbed with cases of Cokes and Diet Cokes and Dr. Peppers and Snickers bars and Reese's and bags of chips. People are very healthy at my dad's office, obviously at the time. But all this stuff, like all these things did it. And we came back, I remember the first week, and we opened up those little plastic jars and we were like, oh my gosh, there's money in there. People actually bought from us. Like, it was actually pretty amazing. And so we'd take the money, we'd sort it out, we'd go buy more inventory, and the cycle kept going. About six months in, we did realize that we were short some money. <laughs> more snacks and drinks were gone than money in the little plastic jar. So, true story. Dad actually had to send the company-wide email <laughs> to remind everyone to pay for their snacks because some people were not having integrity. <laughs> and so they were taking our snacks, but they all paid. And then we actually had like a major surplus the next month. So I think they felt bad and gave us some extra money. But I remember this little business we had, and I remember the first big investment we made. We were so proud of ourselves. We bought one of those electric coin sorters. So instead of like manually putting the coins in the little wrappers, which we had done for about four months, we ordered, I think off of a 1-800 number, off a TV commercial, but you pour all the coins in and it sorts it all. And you could just go to the bank and bring the rolls and it was so easy. But to this day, does it live on about 15 years later? Yes, it does. <laughs> For real. Now we have like five different buildings here in Nashville. Everyone's spread across all these campuses. But yes, in all of the kitchens, other people have taken on your integrity snacks. And what's so fun is not only does the legacy of your integrity snacks live on, but these people legitimately are making money. They're putting it towards their debt. They're using it to go on family trips. Like, it's awesome. I feel like I totally should have franchised it. I could have been getting a cut all these years, but that's another story. So yeah, so we did this whole thing. And I'm telling you, we were not happy about it all the time, but I really am thankful mom and dad did that. It's a little extreme. I'm not telling you that you have to make your teenagers open up their own business, 
But there is something about empowering your kids and showing them that they can do things they may not think is possible. And there is, there's this sense of pride when you do something and you carry those big cases of Cokes up the stairs and your little 14-year arms are shaking, but then you take that money out of the jar. There's something about it that you just feel good about. And so, seriously, press in. Your kids can do more than what you possibly think they can do. And when they start to learn responsibility, it's an amazing thing how that trickles into other areas of their life. All right, hope you enjoyed little Your Integrity Snacks. I should have copyrighted that title, but you can take it for your kids if they want to use it. Totally fine. <laughs> All right, coming up next is fellow Ramsey personality and expert when it comes to talking to teenagers, Anthony O'Neill. When I think about teenagers, that's like the one type of parenting that really intimidates me. So if that's you too, Anthony is about to put us all at ease. He's going to tell us the four things that kids want their parents to know, so you don't want to miss it. Family is one of the most important parts of my life, and making sure everyone is taken care of is a top priority. That includes more than just meal planning, entertaining the kids, and taking care of all the day-to-day -day needs. That's why I recommend having life insurance. Now, when you're shopping for it, you might wonder, should I get term life insurance or whole life insurance? I always recommend term insurance. It's going to save you tons of money that you can put towards paying off your debt and funding your emergency fund. For a 30-year-old male, a 20-year, $250,000 policy would cost just $15 a month for term life. However, the same policy for whole life would be $190 per month. That is a huge difference. Winston and I use Xander Insurance. They do all the work for you by finding you the best prices and options customized to your needs. To learn more, call Xander today or go to xander.com because that's who we trust to take care of our family. Hey, Anthony, thanks Rachel. for coming on. Oh, thank you for having me on. You're it's about here. time. I How know. does it feel? It's great, y'all. This is my first time <laughs> on the Rachel Cruz show. This is better than Fox and Friends, CNN. <laughs> I'm with Rachel. This is legit. <laughs> this is legit. Okay, Anthony, you are like brilliant when it comes to talking to parents about teenagers because you worked with teenagers for years and years. So you have four really great points when it comes to things that parents need to know of what their teens are thinking. Yeah. So walk us through that. Well, I wouldn't say I'm brilliant, but I would definitely say I'm passionate about helping kids and teenagers connect better to their parents. Yeah. Because I believe those two have to be connected so that the teen can have a better future. So one of the first things that I'm seeing is that uh, teens are saying, you know what, our issues are real, and where we are right now may not be the same from when you were a kid. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good. And so what they're simply saying is like, hey, growing up in school today in the year 2019 is not the same as 10 years ago. Yeah. They're saying times are different. And so just understand where I am and understand what I'm going through and just value that and help me go through it right now. That's so good. Okay. What's point number two? Point number two is, you know, parent, the kids are saying we're listening even if I don't show it. Oh. So like even if you think I'm not listening, mom and dad, I am listening. Yeah. And and this generation is a little bit more different on how they express themselves. Mm -hmm. um, they, they tend to keep things on the inside. Mm -hmm. So just be there it's and good. just understand and ask them, did you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Did you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Yep. Yep. And then move on. Just just ask. Unless they roll their eyes. I no. may or may no. not have done that a few times, Dave Ramsey. And that was this not is the good. Yeah, this so is the Rachel Cruz show. Respect, respect yes. is still in play, but yeah. Yeah. they may not look I, they may not look very enthusiastic as they're listening. I'm still scared to roll my eyes on my mama now. Uh, <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> okay, what's next? Um, the next one is, believe it or not, Rachel, kids want to be good kids. Mm -hmm. I've never met a kid that says, I want to be a bad kid. I want to be a horrible kid. Mm -hmm. No, I just believe that they make bad decisions. Um, but I think here, their definition of good may be a different definition to parents. And I think parents need to come together and say, hey, son, I know you have the right heart. Let me teach you how to be this. That's good. Let me show you how to become a good young man or a good young lady. Right now, you're a young kid. That's yeah. good. This All is right. good stuff. Last I'll but not least. This is when I really agree with Rachel. Mm. Let them be kids. Mm. Let them be 10 years old. Let them be 15. Let them be 18. Let them be young kids. I think oftentimes parents have, man, you're going to be this doctor, lawyer, this this preacher, this, 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 and that. No, right now, he's 11. Yeah. Let him enjoy playing soccer. Yeah, that's so good. And I love all those points because what it deals with 
is the character of who the kid is yes. and the parents and the teenagers aligning, which is hard. It's a hard seasonal life. And so you're great at navigating that. So I appreciate it. Okay. Appreciate so you. I went into our Facebook community. Okay. And we got some questions. Okay. So I wanted to dive into three of those questions. Lauren asks, how do I encourage our commission system when Nana pays 10 times what we do? The kids don't want to do chores at home when they know they can make more elsewhere. We tried talking to Nana about it, but she has taken the act now, ask forgiveness later approach. All of our requests seem to have fallen on deaf ears. Well, those are smart kids. Mm. They know they can make more, make them bet at Nana's than they can yeah. at your house. No. Um, this is a tough one because I feel like when parents or extended family mm -hmm. try to help out, but they kind of trump almost what the parent is doing, yeah. either with the amount of money or maybe maybe they're totally negating the whole like commission system in general, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it can be hard. So I think that the fact that you guys have had conversations is really, really important. I think that's great. But what you could do is say, okay, the money that you're going to earn at Nana's, you're going to be making more so we're going to be saving up for a more expensive toy, and that money goes into this little savings account. And so we're going to expect more from you because you're making more here. And I don't know. That's a hard one to navigate. Do you have any thoughts? Something like this is happening with my nephews and my sister's uh, son. Um, one thing I love that I uh, believe and my sister did, they went and had a conversation with Nana. Yeah. Say, hey, mother, this is what we're trying to do at our house. Can you help us mm -hmm. with this over here? Because it's causing an issue. Yeah, yeah. Have the same expectations. Have the same expectations, yeah. That's yeah. good. Jennifer asks, I need to know how to best help my teen son with contentment, especially when it comes to vehicles. Ooh, that's a, that's a tough one. If you are a parent and you are driving a high-end car and everything about your life is very high-end, one thing that you say, Rachel, which I love, is more is caught than taught. And so if your kids see this high-end lifestyle, then they're naturally going to want a high-end car. Yep. So the very first thing is probably self-evaluate what, what are you and your husband or you or your wife presenting to your children. After that, to explain to them, you're still young. And so you don't you don't need a big expensive car. Yeah. You're gonna get right in this price range. And I always recommend every high school student spends no less than a thousand, because we want a quality car that's gonna run yeah. and no more than thirty five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And that they make fifty percent of that and their parents matches that fifty percent. Um and so and so even if you wanna get a ten thousand dollar car, tell them like, hey, not right now. Yep. But have the conversation, be honest, be understanding, mm -hmm. be loving, uh, but tell them up front, we're not doing it. I think that's a great uh, point, especially if you're driving a nicer car. You can't just be absolutely shocked and floored that yes. your child wants a nicer <laughs> car, too. I never really thought about that, but like, yes, that's a great point. Yeah. So good. All right, Lisa asks, what do you do when you're a baby step two and you'll be there another three to four years, but you have two kids mm -hmm. going to college in four to five years? How do we save up in time for that? They already plan on doing two years of community college. Mm -hmm. Great job. First, but are hoping to get some funding. Obviously, we can't depend on that, though. You know, I just love this as a parent. They're already thinking about their, their children's future. Yeah. I love it. Uh, so just follow the baby steps. Get out of debt. Get your three to six months set aside. And then start focusing on your retirement. And then I'll start setting aside for yeah. college. Mm -hmm. Once you get out of that, I would definitely say if they're younger and look into an ESA or 529 plan. Um, and then if they're already in school right now, uh, check out my book, The Graduate Survival Guide, and her book. Right, we co-wrote it. Co-wrote it, <laughs> pink together today. Um, um, but then also grant, grants and scholarships. Yes. The key thing yes. is, do not take out loans. Yes, Anthony. Rachel. I'm so glad you came over. Seriously, You're amazing. so fun, yes. so fun, guys. Make sure to check out everything that Anthony is doing on YouTube and Instagram, and you have a really fun event with yes. Meg Meeker called Smart Parents. What cities are you guys going to be in? We're going to be in Sacramento, California, and we're going to be in Minneapolis. Okay. So that's going to be fun in awesome. May. Um, it's just going to be absolutely amazing. Tickets are moving right now, so yeah. uh, it's going to be exciting. So fun. Thanks, Anthony. Thank you, Rachel. Anthony is so great. Seriously, one of the funniest, best people ever. So, so hilarious. All right, you guys know how passionate I am about you taking control of your money, not just for your benefit, but to change your family tree and getting your kids involved in the process. So up next is a family who is doing just that. I always felt like I had, I had to keep up with the Joneses. We felt trapped. He made a lot of money and we had nothing. 
The worst moment was when I had to call my husband at work. I had to tell him not to buy anything. We didn't have a dollar in the bank, a dollar on a credit card, nothing. I was upset with myself. Couldn't believe I had gotten this bad. And she was there in wait, just ready with a plan. And we knew that, you know, this would affect the kids, and the kids were amazing about it. We brought them into the whole mix, told them what we were doing. One thing we always made sure was to have them take any credit card applications that we got in the mail <laughs> and rip them off. Just wanted to instill in them that, you know, credit is not something that we do. We don't want them to do the same things we did. They're putting their own value on things, and it, it seems like their goals were our goals eventually. Before, everything, every purchase was with a whole bunch of baggage attached to it. It's the most freeing feeling ever. We're dead free! Well, thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you so much for having us. All the way from Phoenix. Arizona, a little bit of a trip, yes. but you're here because you're celebrating something fun. We are. Absolutely. What are you guys doing? Get our debt free screen. Yep, we're celebrating our debt freedom. Yes. Amazing. So, how much debt did you guys pay off? $303,000. $303,000. Okay, and that includes the mortgage. Yes, it right? does. But still, you guys, you, have, you don't have a house payment. No. Like, you totally have, have no payments. Okay. So I'm dying to know what was life before this journey? It was waiting for the paycheck to pay the bills. You know, mm -hmm. had to wait for it, had to wait for it. You know, it, the second it came, I'd pay all the bills and that was that. And so what get was, the, ourselves what in was the, hole. the breaking point that you were like, okay, we have to do something different? Like something has to change. We didn't have a penny to our name on a credit yeah. card or in a bank. Yes. Justin, Nothing. did you know all of this? Yeah, I didn't know it was as bad as I thought it was, yeah. but it was pretty. Pretty bad. Yep. Yeah. Bef before our financial journey, I thought life was great because it just we just bought anything we wanted and put anything on the credit card. One thing led to another, you know, one bill led into another bill being late and more and more debt, and it just snowballed in the wrong, <laughs> yeah, wrong. for the wrong, <laughs> very wrong, wrong snowball. Yes. Yeah. So you look up and you're like, okay, we we have to change. So that yeah. shift yeah, of living where you can buy anything you want. I'm sure you kids, you guys. <laughs> could get whatever you wanted for the most part. I'm sure you weren't overly, I'm sure your parents said no to you a few times. But yeah, you you kind of just lived as you all wanted as a family. And so making that shift mm -hmm. was a big one, I'm sure. Yeah. So I know with, for a lot of parents, when they're talking to their kids about this, when they're kind of starting that new journey, there's this balance of sharing, but not scaring them, right? Mm -hmm. So do you feel like you found that good balance? Yes. I think so. I mean, to be honest, the kids made it easy. I mean, we we would tell them everything. We told yeah. them how much the mortgage was. We told them how much the electricity mm -hmm. was. We told them everything. And then it's like, no, we don't have to worry. All the bills are paid. We're always going to have food. That's yeah. not a problem. But we're doing all the extra to the debt so we can just be done and do whatever we want. Yes. You know? So we, we definitely explained all of that. Yep. But yeah, they weren't deprived. Totally. Right? Absolutely. I, I, that was very important to make them not feel deprived. Yes, absolutely. One of the big things was we opened up a banking account for both of them. Yeah. And they went to the bank and they opened it up. They talked to the teller. They handed over the money and they had complete control of it. And every month they get a bank statement in the mail and they open it up. They look at it. Yeah. And they know. Was it fun going to the bank and opening the account? Oh, kind yeah. of like the adult world, right? Kind of yeah. like you're answering makes you that. feel like responsible, right? So what other tactical things did you guys use with the kids to help teach them about their own money? I mean, you guys obviously opened up a bank account, which is awesome for them, I and mean, they're already being introduced to so mm -hmm. much. Is there anything else that you guys did that you feel like really worked? Well, we did get them Financial Peace Jr. Oh, yeah. Yes. So they read all the books. You guys have your banks, yeah. the, the, the Triangle Banks. Yeah. What What's your most favorite thing you've ever paid for on your own? Probably my Nintendo Switch. I actually raised up yeah. all that money. Oh, for the whole thing? How much was yes. that? Probably like three hundred dollars. How did you earn three hundred dollars? Did you do chores? chores yes. Yeah. So good. After you do your chores, do you guys like check them off? Yeah, we oh, have yeah. we have chore sticks now. Okay, so what is that, Quentin? Tell me about that. Oh, well, it's like just popsicle sticks, and it just has the chores written on them. The smaller ones that if we do them, we get a single dollar. But the bigger ones, then we get two dollars. Depending on the popsicle stick and the yeah. size. Absolutely. Oh, y'all, that's so creative. That's yeah. so good. So yeah. good. Because life is crazy, right? Like, oh, yeah. I even remember growing up with, you know, and us doing it even as Ramses. I'm like, and we'd forget weeks at a time sometimes. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, it's just, it's life is nuts. And so the consistency is good, but 
even a little bit goes such a long way. Mm. But you guys are doing more than just a little. I mean, you are totally changing your your family legacy. So what encouragement would you give a family who thinks, okay, we have, maybe they have $30,000, maybe it's not 300000 and they're thinking, we have kids, like, we're doing life, we're busy, like, I don't think it's possible for us to buckle down and do this. What would you say? It is. You have to. You have to. There, There's just no way around it. I mean, do it for your kids. Mm. I mean, we— Love it even more when we can buy something, mm-hmm. when we really, really want it, and we recognize whether we really, really want it. I mean, we we have talks with them when we're at the store, and be like, well, do you really want that? Like, what are you going to do with that? What do you need that for? And um, Actually, a funny story. Emma had an Amazon gift card. She wanted to go on Amazon and see what she wanted, and I yeah. was like, do you really need anything? And she's like, well, not really. And I was like, isn't that nice? Isn't mm. that a nice place to be? <laughs> You know, That's so good. Yes. So it was. It was awesome. See what a good conversation. Yeah, I mean, leading into contentment and just learning, mm-hmm. like, yeah, you can be okay. You know, there's 39 year olds who don't have. What <laughs> That's what I told her. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's I mean, what I told her. Well, you guys are absolutely amazing. Truly, an inspiration to so many families. Thank you. And you kids are awesome. Seriously, you guys are awesome. So great. So thank, thank you, you all thank for coming you. on thank and sharing so story. much. Thank you. All right, this has been such a great episode. Thank you to Anthony, Jana, and Justin and their kids for coming on. And you've heard some great stuff all in this episode. So you can find everything in the show notes, including all you need to know about my new contentment journal. That's right. All right, you guys know how much I love April Fools and pranking people around the office. I have been known to do that a time or two. So this April Fools, I have partnered with someone who's a little bit more incognito than me, George Camel himself. He's going to prank some people around the office and it's fantastic. Hey guys, George Camel here. So yeah, Rachel decided to send me out and we're gonna go out and prank some people around the office. So take a look. Ramsey Solutions. My name is Victoria. How may I direct your call? Oh, hi, Christy. Oh, I'm so sorry. I haven't heard anything about that. No one left any information here at the front desk. Let me check into it. Christy, okay, so here's the crazy thing. I saw someone around your car, and I was like, what is going on? But I had to get back to the show. If there was no damage, I wonder if it could have been Rachel Cruz? You just got pranked courtesy of the Rachel Cruz Show. Always be looking over your shoulder, Christy. That's right, that's good advice. And uh, you can thank Rachel Cruz and her team. Oh, God. Sorry about that. My bad. Hey, Rick, do you got a quick second? Rachel Cruz. trying out some new ideas and we're trying to get some just team member feedback. It's a new building. Mm-hmm. We're trying to keep it real clean. And so they're thinking about enforcing this no shoe policy. Do you know people who do that in their own homes? They're like, hey, they when you walk in, take off. off your shoes. No. I would love that. Maybe for you, but what about all the other people with gross feet? It, it sounds like a good idea. You're not worried about the stench? No, I'm not. Raw, in living color. No. Not, okay. I love feet. Are you 100% no on this? I'm no. Can you keep it down, dude? I'm on the phone. What the heck was that? <laughs> what was in there? Whoopee cushion? What? You think I did this? You think I'm capable of that? Only a close friend would do something like that to you. You just got punked by the Rachel Cruz show. (laughs) 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 (laughs)
April Fools. You gotta love it, don't you? All right, if you have not subscribed yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss my next episode. And if you've not subscribed to the podcast, make sure you do that as well. And in the meantime, remember to take control of your money and create a life you love.